You're listening to Big Blend Radio Champagne Sunday Show with Nancy and Lisa, publishers of Big Blend Magazines. And you just heard Milkweed and Thistle. And that is off of the brand new (laughs) album called Delta Tales. It's a debut album by Sun King Rising, and it comes out Friday, October 2nd. So go check out sunkingrising.com or go to sunkingrising.bandcamp.com because Hey, that's one of the best music sites to purchase music. Actually, the money goes to the artist, from what I've learned. So a really good place, cool. but uh, it's going to be everywhere, <laughs> all over, all the streaming platforms. Uh, but you can pre-order it right now, and we're very excited to have the man behind Sun King Rising. Right, It is uh, John Blumgero, and he is joining us out of Texas. So how are you doing, John? Hi, Nancy and Lisa, and thank you so much for having me on your show on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. I really appreciate it. it. Hey, it is good to have you on. And I'm telling you, man, Nancy was talking about cool. meatloaf and Rocky Horror <laughs> Picture Show. We're talking about hair. <laughs> and, and, and right Nancy there, man. Going, I know, right? Isn't it like <laughs> what? Your voice is so powerful. It mm-hmm. really is. Oh. And it, it's awesome. I love it. Well, thank you. I've been told I have one of those voices people either like or hate, so I'm I'm glad you're coming down on that side. (laughs) Yeah, no, no, we're we're on the like and and love it side. And Nancy, you always talk about musicians doing rock operas. I know. And don't you think he could do like a southern rock opera? Actually, you know what I was thinking during this? I think you should command the news stations and take over the news and do it in that style. (laughs) I mean... (laughs) Seriously, wouldn't that be fun? I love like it. Like to sing the news like that? Yeah, I know. <laughs> that maybe so, you know, I mean, it would be far more interesting. I know. I know. It is it's I, it's I must neat. say that one of my one of my lifelong dreams is to uh play the role of Javert in Les Mis. That's that's the that's the role I want one of these days. Oh, cool. I yeah, I really see this. I see like you could do like the whole album, right? In a way, could be performance. Would you do that? Like just go for it and put it up on stage oh, yeah. that way. <laughs> well, it is kind I, of a concept album to begin with. It's you know, it's kind of yeah. a, it has a theme running yeah. through it. Yeah, and it's, it's very visual. So you know, maybe I'll put it on the list of things to consider. <laughs> I know. Well, well, let's talk about how, you know, let's start with the name, Sun King Rising. Where did that come from? Yeah. So that's interesting. That actually comes from my career in science. I'm a, Mm. I'm kind of a large guy and have long hair and I've, I've always been kind of uh, theatrical and I'm, when I give scientific talks, I, I, I kind of am very effusive and expansive, and, and because of my hair, I look a bit like the great uh, Louis the Sun King, and uh, hmm. they started calling me the Sun King. So then hmm. I kind of decided that I liked that, and I carried it on. Originally, the the album was going to be called Sun King Reborn, would be the, hmm. the underlying moniker. And then the record company, Peacock Sunrise Records, said, let's change it to Sun King Rising and make it even more positive. So I said, oh, it's like the mojo rise. Sounds good to me. Sounds good yeah. to me, boss. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is, well, this is neat too, because Nick Katona now, he, he is really into prog rock, right? With his uh, other label, Melodic Revolution. So when you think about this, because when I was listening, and, and I didn't want to say anything before we got you on the air, but listening to the whole album, this is what's very unique for me. There's prog rock, but it feels like yours is like, Got you got a little bit of southern rock, swampy, bluesy country, mm-hmm. like but it's got prog rock in it. Those elements in there, the building and the whole like, that's where the theater comes in. I think. Yeah, for me, because I think it has got a little well, prog rock. That's in really it. interesting because I because I do have a prog rock project also called Harlequin Reborn, but uh, but this this one is quite different. But I guess you know you can't take the prog out of the writer and I and the, the musicians are always complaining that I use a lot of weird chords so uh, that that shows my prog rock roots but <laughs> and that, that but yeah but I mean it's still you've got this this but it, it's it, fresh I know, know. It, because it, you don't it it um when you when you use weird chords then people go oh what was that you know mm-hmm. and they can't really mm-hmm. identify that it's chord that mm-hmm. might be different for them but it, it it makes you sit up and, oh, 
You know, I mm-hmm. like that. We all like a little ooh. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so did, when in be, you've been in music for a while, and then you've got the prog rock side, like you were saying, but then you've got this genetic science scientist at the other side of your life. How do those connect? Because I always, you know, with all the people we've interviewed that have been either, you know, <laughs> playing with, you know, rockets and space or maths and, and you know, mathematicians, cool. we, I feel like they're they're all interconnected in a way. So would you say that those two, you know, those two careers connect and hold hands? Well, I think there are. There are a lot of scientists who are also musicians. I know a lot of good musicians who, who are primarily scientists. I kind of got into it. I, I, you know, I wanted to be a rock star, but I had this practical thing growing through me and I had to decide, you know, whether I was going to find a way that was going to truly be able to pay the bills come thick and thin. And I love science. Hmm. So I went into genetics and I went hmm. into kind of uh, a, a, basically a type of medical genetics where I mm-hmm. look for genes that, influence some of the most common diseases like diabetes and heart disease and mm-hmm. things like that. But it's, it's interesting because my personal area of expertise is on the mathematical side. So I'm a bit of a theoretician and statistician. Mm-hmm. So those math skills very much relate to, to musical theory. And I, and I find that I kind of use the same part of my brain <laughs> for music and for the math. So hmm. there's something to it. I, I yeah, think there is. Well, I, we, when we had a band for a very short while and we had a rhythm guitarist who um, didn't know what three quarter time was. And um, we were trying to explain the difference between four, four and three, four. <laughs> it, you can, it's really good it, when it's a rhythm it, guitarist. I know, you know, so, you know, the walls, didn't happen because it couldn't happen because I don't know how to explain it, but math plays a big part in music. I just say that. That's a, it does. That sounds like rhythm, rhythmically challenged there. I don't know. Yeah, you think. <laughs> well, hey, but come on, music does go in the genes too, doesn't it? I mean, that's that does, sort of... yes. There's definitely, mm-hmm. there's definitely been studies that show that musical ability has a genetic mm-hmm. component, and certainly something like perfect pitch is dominated by genetics. So, oh wow, yes, there are. that's interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. So uh, for I don't you, have perfect pitch, however. <laughs> I, 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 all I know is I dig your singing, and I love yeah. the act, the music, because you do take us on a on a ride. Like that's a, the first thing I'm like, I can't wait to get this in the car and and just I know it's a Texas. The Delta, Mississippi, all those areas, you know, and there's even California, there's a Delta out there that I dig. And, you know, to me, that's, we've been going through a lot of those areas, even like, even we were in Erie, Pennsylvania. I know you, you, you grew up in Pennsylvania, right? Or, or lived out there and there's swampy. I, I grew up around Pittsburgh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. We, we were all over Pennsylvania this year and we didn't do the big cities but we did go like to Erie and all and um, Brandywine Valley and we went to Lancaster so cool. and saw the Amish and I was like, wow, that is real. And um, it was really <laughs> an interesting state, but they had like, there was milkweed everywhere and thistle. We just saw thistle up in on the Blue Ridge Parkway in the North Carolina. But there's these things that, you know, it's like when you go through like Texas and the South, like Louisiana, Mississippi, Texas, that that um I don't know, there's no place like that ever, anywhere. There's just a feeling you get and I think your music really it's it's heavy with it. That whole area. Uh, that's what you, I was trying to I was trying to tap into that feeling and make this album as as organic as I could. Mm-hmm. And, uh, mm, uh, cool. I'm uh, I'm pretty happy with how it's all come out. Yeah, cool. you should be. Now, yeah. the snake, that's the first thing that we heard was the snake <laughs> and, and watched on uh-huh. your video. And that video is a trip, man. Who did that? <laughs> who, who created that? That is that's a trip. Awesome. It's Sunday. We should yeah, talk so, about it. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's interesting. So, so, uh, so I didn't write that song. That's an old soul song that mm. 
the civil rights activist Oscar Brown wrote in 1963, and then hmm. it was kind of a minor hit by a guy named Al Wilson in 1968, who was on Johnny Rivers' uh, uh, album label, Soul City. Hmm. So, but my producer, Ace Acker, who this album would have never happened without Ace, he absolutely was pivotal to this all coming up. He brought this song to me, and he said, he said, John, I think your voice is really suited to this, and, and we'd, I think it would be great to update this song. And I just loved it, and it just turned out great. And then he had a couple of friends of his who are, uh, who are on the artsy side and, uh, uh, and excellent artists and, and cinematographers and whatnot, and they, they had this concept about the video that uh, cool and uh, it turned out pretty good it's kind of campy i like it it's kind of uh, it's uh, we loved it we we had a, a good time yeah. humorous and, and it it's fun everyone you got to check it out you you got to go mm-hmm. check it out um and and then also one of my favorite songs on the album is down the delta road um mm-hmm. that i mean again like you just want to go like i want to go uh, let's let's can we do the show while we're driving? <laughs> See, it's road trip. This is total road trip music. I know. That's it. Which it's is that's valuable. We'll do from now on. Except for yeah. I can't drink champagne while I'm driving. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, down the Delta Road, I love that. Because it just, you kind of. Oh, great. Yeah, you just sit, you sit low. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, were all of these kind of, you know, it's a concept album, like you said, but did it all, did you kind of say, okay, I'm going to do songs like this, or did they kind of come out organically? So like, I've been writing these for quite a while. Some of these songs go back as far as about 2000, and Down the Delta Road is one of them. Mm. And then some of the other ones are brand new. Like I literally wrote during the recording of this. You know, We started recording in January of 2020, and – and, but like mm-hmm. Milkweed Thistle, I wrote during the recording. It just popped really? into my head, and I had to wow. go with it. And Beneath cool. the Southern Sun was another one that I wrote oh, during the recording. I love that. And, uh, love and that. Then, then Evangeline in the Morning actually came late, whereas like Love Turns Gray, Drive Me to Nashville, those are also older songs. We They were all redone. This album has you know real musicians on it, so this is a mm-hmm. real, you know, musicians in studios. There's not a you know, a lot of, you know, samples of, mu- of, of instruments. We have real horn sections on here. Mm-hmm. We have a outstanding singer. female oh gospel gosh. type backup oh. singers throughout it. That has just been a blast to, to hear. So, so cool. I, 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 I love that. I did. You had it, it. The whole thing is it, the whole thing is just really badass, and everyone needs to get it and and just go for the whole ride. You have to go for the whole ride with it. Start in the beginning, just dig in, and then you're gonna play mm-hmm. again. And every time you listen uh, to it, you hear something new. There are there are more than forty different musicians, I think, who have played on this thing. And so my oh. producer had to keep track of all of this. I mean, we have fabulous players on this, like on the snake. The drummer is George Perilli, and, and he played with and toured extensively with Michael McDonald, who's a pretty soulful mm-hmm. guy also, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. uh, guitars throughout this, I don't know if you noticed that incredible guitar solo on Milk mm-hmm. Green Thistle. Mm-hmm. That's actually, that's, uh, that's my cousin Steve Schubert, who was a session man in Nashville for years and a, a cool. fabulous musician, kind of a... Uh, guitarist guitarist so we're just so we have just so many great players on this and you mentioned down the delta road the drummer on that is john safara from the Hmm. uh, well-known rock band glass harp an incredible band that phil kagey the famous guitarist played with you know so yeah i'm just so fortunate to have wonderful musicians throughout this album and how did you do it i mean because you're saying you start in january and then covid hits did you have to do the whole kind of virtual collaboration? Yeah, so it was it was done. I think seven different studios were used. Whenever we could, we would try to get the rhythm section in one place and play. And that's kind of why it, it's so tight, because that happened through most of it. So, and then they had to, uh, you know, just be uh, COVID aware. Uh, 
but a lot of it was yeah. done like uh, Steve's parts on guitar. Those were done in his own studio and with uh, tracks sent to him. And so it was a, it was a, it was a logistical, uh, you know, issue, but, but Ace certainly pulled it off and I wouldn't have been able to have done it myself. So. Yeah. Everyone is, uh, it's Greatly. Steve Ace Acker, uh, fantastic producer and, and one thing I want to ask you is, are you connected to nature? Because I think maybe it is just because we go to parks a lot and, and we're driving a lot. And I'm for me, just, I, I don't know, but listening to the album, I felt like I was coming home. Like I was like, like going home, like you're, you're on a road home and you're kind of going through life's experiences on your way home. That's just for me. That's my personal thing. Everybody's got their own thing when they hear something. But it felt very much like, um, you know, the, the the one song that um, hit me too was Evangeline in the morning. I felt like almost like you, right. were, I could almost feel like dewdrops, you know, it, it, you know, that early morning mist. I don't know. It just felt very yeah. much like nature kind of touched itself on all of this too. Well, I you know, like I said, I, this album is really about the, the the southern experience, and so a lot of the south is just that feel, you know, it's the Mm-hmm. It's the the warmth of of the of the evening. It's the the smell of the magnolias. It's the, mm. you know it's just that 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 spiritual aspect of of the South that that uh, I've always been in love with. I was born, although I grew up outside of Pittsburgh, I was born to a Southern mama. So ah, okay. my culture was Southern, mm. even though I lived in the in the North, and then. Mm. After I finished my doctoral work, I got to Texas as soon as I could, and I've been in Texas ever since. So. Right on, right on. We <laughs> like Texas. We like yeah. Texas. And music is so diverse in Texas. You could be listening to Um Papa, Norteno, and then going up and hearing like Buddy Holly stuff. You know, it's like so. It's so cool because it's such a big state, and so many cultures are in Texas. It's so multicultural and, and diverse. It's awesome. But let's play down the Delta Road. Are you cool with that? We talked about yeah, it a lot. Sure. I feel like we got to play it, man. Here it is, everyone. Down right. down the Delta Road. Again, the album is Delta Tales, and it's from Sun King Rising, and it comes out October 2nd. So check it out at sunkingrising.com. Take a listen. Get a girl from Big Spur, waiting for his train. And her conversation as they walk.
listening to Big Win Radio Champagne Sunday Show with Nancy and Lisa, and you just heard Down the Delta Road again from the album Delta Tales, and that is by Sun King Rising. And we have John with us. John, um, man, we got a big magnolia tree outside. Do you think, you know, mm-hmm. you go get, I, I'll go find some dude out there. <laughs> Come on, let's go into the magnolia tree. <laughs> <laughs> we do. They have really big magnolia trees out here, and and in it's amazing. Arkansas and even um, Louisiana, like you go hiking and you'll find magnolia trees out in the wild, and there's it's something crazy. magical about that. Mm-hmm. When you're out way west, it's like they're all um, landscaped and you know la di da in the town towns, but. There's something magical about magnolia trees. So thank you for putting that in there. <laughs> I dig it. <laughs> but your voice goes all over. Your voice, I mean, it's it's amazing to me how you, you go really low and deep, and then you're up there, and it's it's amazing. That's super cool. I love the diversity of it. it it's neat. But then also all the musicians that were playing on that song. That was sweet. That's sweet. It's a good song. Yeah, we had good some people. good ones on that one, too. It was uh a very nice uh, guitar part on there from a, a, a fabulous musician named, I'm uh, sorry, not guitar, a violin part, fabulous mm-hmm. musician named Kath, Catherine O'Neill. And then that, mm. that dobro twanging in there was by a guy named Chuck Hall. It was also okay. an excellent museum. So. Man, I, yeah. I, just, I want to make a map of different routes that we travel, and I just want to, like, from here to here, you play this, and then from here to here, play this, and from here to here, play this. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Because there's certain songs, like, I want to take this over to Saguaro National Park, or I want to put this over here by Louisiana. You know, there's a certain natural uh, trace. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, so you, you, I don't want to tell people what to do, but I would like to encourage them oh, yes, to play. <laughs> well, I do. But come on, uh, you know, I like things done right. No, um, um, <laughs> oh, 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 here comes those emails. Don't bother. Um, I'd just like to to put music to landscape, like mm-hmm. to, um, I don't know. I, I think those I two worlds back on belong the road together. Hmm? I, I want to get back on the road right now, and I listen to his music. I just I know. Start, I want to start driving road again. <laughs> I know. Oh, well, thank great. you, yeah. because. I need music to get through Texas. Are you serious? Like, that's a huge yeah. state to drive across, man. <laughs> and I've had to do it a lot. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I need your music. And, and yet Texas is beautiful to look out. And the cha- the scenery is always changing. But it is time to ask you what – wait, you get to have the bell, too. <laughs> the bell. I don't know what's wrong with the bell. It's having a problem The today, bell has its own mind. It does. What is your champagne toast? What are you happy about? Okay, so I'm certainly grateful for all the, you know, the help that I had from numerous friends and musicians who worked on making my album Delta Tales possible Mm. during these troubled times. So I think my toast is going to be to the world's hardworking musicians who they've lost so much of their livelihood Mm. because of the pandemic. Mm. Yet, Yet these creative artists are still producing such wonderful music and trying to adapt and to make it through this darkness. And I would remind them that after darkness always mm. comes light. So yeah. salute mm-hmm. to all the musicians. Here, here. Yeah, I love, I love that. And, and mm. you know, we're, we're going to play uh, your song, Let There Be Light, as well, for everyone. So, Excellent. you know, we, we got, yeah, we're going to play that, and, and, but we're going to play Spontaneous first. But you want to tell anybody, everyone, about Let There Be Light? Because that goes with your toast, I think. We do need that light. Sure. So the al- Let There Be Light is the last song on the album. It's a song. It was one of the, I think I wrote it in, a, in the mid-2000s, and I played it a lot live since then. And it seems to all people, uh, I often end the show with it. And mm-hmm. it just seems yeah. like it's a natural, upbeat kind of song, and it's, and that's what we really need right now. We need to mm-hmm. have more light in the world. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so it's, I agree. Uh, and it's got a, if I, it, I think it's got a pretty good hook in it too. So. <laughs> cool. It's it is it is it's catchy and then you're that's when you, I said you have to you know listen to the album and then you'll get to the end of Let There Be Light and you're like wait I got to start all over again. I got to play it again. <laughs> and you will hear new things each time, which I love. I yeah, love albums I love like that. that. You 
because it, it's just the musicianship. My gosh, you just want to, you're like, oh, I want to go back and listen more on that violin a little bit more, you know, because our ears can do that. I, I have a really weird question to ask you before we play Spontaneous, Uh-oh. the song game. We love the song game. Check it out, <laughs> songgame.com. Uh, someone will be butt fanned, maybe, maybe not. Um, Uh-oh. Since you do genetics, like I was looking at genetic science, I'm like, okay, is that really what I think it is? And it is. And there's the plants and animals and humans, right? With mm-hmm. their genes. Sure. So, fungus <laughs> and mushrooms. Mushroom. Explain is, the Are mushroom. they really <laughs> part part animal, part plant? Like they're their own thing? You're like no, the they're, they're, No, they're they're their <laughs> own uh, thing. Uh, genre <laughs> completely. So they're they have unique aspects of them, but all all life is based around DNA, and that's what we study in genetics. So it's uh, oh, it's, so, it's all so very whenever... similar across uh, across life forms. Hmm. So what about lichen? Is that a plant, or is it a is it in its own thing? I mean, its so own thing. Now you're catching me off guard because I you know. Okay. I do human stuff. I work in a medical oh. school. I work on Yeah, he's medicine. not playing like him. No, but, it, okay. but when yesterday we think, went for a I walk I, and I, I think I skipped out on my plant science uh, no, no, but it classes. Just, <laughs> no, no problem. But, you know, I just always have seen lichen all over the place. But it's in, in the, the neighborhood where we're in now, we went for a walk and I saw it on the electrical or phone lines. Um, growing there, and I've never seen that before. And I'm like, dude, how'd you get up there? And uh-huh. like, what are you? You know, are you a plant? Because I don't know. You know, Fung- fungi. It's like its own thing. If and if it's it got is. a relative, and, I mean, the lichen and fungi hang out together. I have relatives who are fungi. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I do have a fungi in my life, but you know, I do, it's a cat right now called Gotham. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but all right. So spontaneous and song game is a really cool board Uh-oh. game, and you you play. It, it's so much fun. In fact, it beat out Monopoly sales last year on Amazon.com. So cool. Right? This is so much fun. <laughs> you do not need to be a singer like John to play it. But what it is, you get a word, and it's like if you hear a word like red, you could go red. Red wine makes me feel so fine. See, so that's what we want to hear. We want to hear like a few, you know, words from the song lyrics. You have to have at least five that include that one word. So, Nancy, I'm going to do it with you so that John can hear how we play here on the radio. So, the Nancy, pressure. your word, I know I'm going to give you the word lichen, huh? No, no, come on. And you get 10 seconds to do it. And if you don't do it in 10 seconds, you will get butt pants. Oh, so, boy. your word, I've got to think of your word. Oh, okay, I know. I'm, I'm looking at them right now. Your word is flowers. Go, Nancy. If you go to San Francisco, there are flowers in their hair. <laughs> no. Why? What? If you go to wear, be sure to wear flowers in your hair. Is that the one? Yeah. If you go That's to not... San Francisco, they're wearing flowers. That I you know, no, it's close. No. Come on. No. no. John, what do you think? Should she be butt pinned? <laughs> It's pretty close. I don't know. It would be yeah. be be sure to wear some flowers, flowers in, your, in hair. your hair. See, <laughs> not bad. Okay, if John's being nice to you, then we'll be we'll be Thank good. Thank you, John. I'll get you later. Uh, okay. This is gonna come <laughs> back to bite me. I think. No, <laughs> no. Nancy's gonna give you words now that John has been nice oh, to you. You need to play nice, Nancy. Otherwise, I'll turn into your mother. <laughs> there you go. Oh my God, that would be funny. <laughs> I know. So come on, give him a word. Okay. Um, okay, then let's do trees. All right, go, John. Trees. Oh. You're mean, Nancy. That's <laughs> not mean. I talk to the trees. But they don't listen there to go. me. Uh, yeah, there you go. All right, you work together. That was a team effort on both parts, so you guys are both good, and no one gets butt panned. Very good. Of course, that's, from, that, no. that's from Paint Your, paint your Wagon. But. And Clint yeah. Eastwood sang it. Now, that's yeah. funny. That's it. There it is. Okay, in, in, that, in that spirit, let there be light. 
<laughs> let there be no butt panning and let there be light. So we're going to play that. Everyone, again, it's the last song off of John's album. Again, Sun King Rising. Uh, the album is called Delta Tales. And go to sunkingrising.com, especially go to sunkingrising.bandcamp.com and check it out. He's also on Facebook. So here it is, Let There Be Light. Thank you so much, John, for joining us. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. It was okay, fun. You take care. Yeah. Oh 